saying these people aren't Christians. You guys need to this get is Bible. not the gospel. You need the to gospel look is at those Jesus Bibles. Christ you has need to died read those and Bibles risen. And, know and if the you word believe, of God, you will be saved. See, That's God it. says, "My people well, perish." For lack of Repent knowledge. and believe, sinner. Right. Speaking right. to these That's two right. people Repent. here. Repent. And they have and no knowledge of God. God. Are you going to say that? I heard that Sarah was Abraham's wife. Have no you knowledge of God. God. I think you're you need to have. know the Lord your God. God. Serve Him. God. Love Him. You See, you don't, don't know the difference. You don't know the difference between being happy and being lost. What I do? I like one it. time I got, one time I got lost in Disneyland, and it was really scary. See, this is what the scripture says. The scripture says, "Hell and death are never full, and in that same way, your lusts are never satisfied." That's true. You are not content. You're not happy. Your lusts are not satisfied. You have to go day. out and do the same thing tomorrow night because you're not going to get enough tonight. You're Your lusts are you're never satisfied. Come out here and in the same way, the same hell thing. and death are never full. But see, I am content in Christ Jesus. Oh, oh the Christ. more I get to Jesus Him, Christ. the more I love Him. So I am content with Christ Jesus. And you know what? I am looking forward to that day. It's true. I am satisfied when I wake up with His likeness. Yes. When I wake up as Jesus Christ That's with his likeness you upon me. Your husband who you think is the Lord. Yeah. Worshiping oh. false gods. I do, I do call him Lord. Wait, so if I called him Lord? He's not your husband. I never said he was, but if I called him Lord, would that, would that make me better? He's not your husband. So? She honors the Lord when she submits under her husband. Oh my God! See, this is this that. is the difference between a <laughs> married woman and an unmarried woman. I told you you had a lack of knowledge. Okay. Wait, what if I submit under my friends? Listen here. This is the difference between a married woman who is in Christ Jesus and an unmarried woman who is in Christ Jesus. God says that an unmarried woman is concerned for the things of God. Oh. How she may be holy in all the things that she does and in her conversation. It says a married woman cares for the things of her husband. How she may please her husband. She is pleasing to God. It is pleasing to God that a married woman would represent the church and just as the church seeks to please Jesus Christ in all that she does, and to serve Jesus Christ, and to help Jesus Christ, though he needs no help, yet he allows Wait, us to help him. what are unmarried women supposed to do? I just told you. You did it. You said yes. not married women are No, here. a single I woman is to be holy I'm in all. Single for her conversation and all of her lifestyle. She is to be holy. That's what she's to be concerned about. In serving God is what she's to be concerned about. A married woman in Christ Jesus cares for the things of her husband. How she may please her husband. So what do you mean by saying this? Yeah, what is pleasing your husband? Are you, what is pleasing him? I'm, I'm a little confused. I'm I don't understand how you're supposed to please your husband. How do you please your husband? Yeah. When I'm a wife, things that he enjoys. Oh, I can cook for my husband. I can kiss my husband. I can love my husband in every way that he desires for me to love my husband. That's right. And I'm not ashamed to speak of these things because God has given us these things to enjoy. I can, I can go. And get something at the store for my husband? What about free will? <laughs> what about free will? You're supposed to be a slave or something? Oh, well, you know what? I am much more than a slave to my husband. <laughs> <laughs> See, I desire to serve my husband. Servants. I desire to serve my husband. God has given me that desire. Just as he gives his church, his people, the desire to serve him. I desire to be with my husband. Just as God gives his church the desire to be with Jesus Christ. To love Jesus Christ. Oh, they desire nothing more than to be with him. They're satisfied when they're with him. They're satisfied when they see him. 
saying to them, well done, my good and my faithful servant. See, we're not deserving of any of those things. We're not deserving that God would say to us, well done, my good and my faithful servant. We're deserving that God would say to us, you have sinned against the holy God, and I am going to cast you to hell for all eternity. That's what I deserve from God, because I have sinned against the holy God. I've been a liar. I've been a covetous person. I've been an idolater, meaning I worshiped and served idols rather than worshiping and serving you the worship? true God. What do you, you worship? But Jesus Christ in his mercy, when you and his idolater. mercy has come and has become a man and has humbled himself to the point of death, even the death on the cross, that he might save me from sin and reconcile me unto God. And now I am a new creature. If God and all things this, are passed away. He would do this crap and all himself, things have become new. <laughs> See, Jesus right. Christ he doesn't believe any these of your crap. This is why he's not even. This man you. says God is more powerful than any of you. So he wouldn't use you weak folks to do these things. He gave you free will but see, reason. God says that the preaching of the cross is foolishness to you who are perishing. It's true. And God has chosen the foolishness of preaching to save those whom he has called. See, God saves people by foolish things. I don't think God is as mean as you make him. Weak things. See, God humbled himself to the point of death on the cross. He became weak that we might be made strong. And God says, if you wait upon the Lord, He will exchange His strength for yours. If you wait upon the Lord, He will give you strength. But you don't want the strength of God. You want to lift up yourself above God. You want to say, no, no, God is a liar and every man is true. But God says, no. God is true, though every man be found a liar. True. God's word will judge you. So if I were you, I'd get into it and see what the word said and be concerned. That's right. Because these are the words that are going to judge you. See, if I hear that I have broken a law and I am arrested and taken to court, I want to figure out what those words that are against me are. What law have I broken? How can I defend myself? And you have broken God's law. You have lied. You have stolen. You have taken God's name in vain. And God says, well, you will not hold your guilt unless you take his name in vain. And these words are the words that are going to judge you. God says on that day of judgment, every mouth will be stopped. So God says if you'll humble yourself as one of these little children, one of these children over here who believes everything their mom tells her, if you'll humble yourself as one of these little children, if you'll come to Jesus Christ and believe what he says in this word, then Jesus Christ will have mercy upon you. If you'll believe on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, not according to what all your churches tell you. Not according to what all your false pastors tell you. But according to what God tells you. Then Jesus Christ will heal you. He will cleanse you. He'll take away your heart of stone. It's true. And he'll give you a new heart. He will. And put a spirit within you. And give you a new spirit. That's right. Oh, the grace of God that brings salvation. He's appeared to all people. And it teaches us to deny ungodliness and worldly lust and to live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. You have that grace of God upon you. See, you're sorry. Sorrow is just like the world of sorrow.